What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kinda Funny Games Daily for Monday, April 9th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside at Tim Geddes. Let's most welcome back, Greg. Thank you. You've been gone. I haven't gone. The east, the far east. I was off to the far east, east. they call Boston. Yes. Yes, The farthest east you can go, they Mm -hmm. say, before you fall off the side of the world. Uh, Yeah, I was out there for PAX East. Of course, everybody, thank you so much for coming to the first annual Kind of Funny Chicken Wing Ding BYOW 2018. Uh, Sorry that the enforcer stopped the panel in the middle of it, and it seemed like we might get banned, but we're probably not banned. Is there a VOD of this anywhere? Like, can people see uh, it? There's VOD on the Twitch page, I assume. It's Hmm. one of those, yeah, if you're not there to see the enforcer come out and stop shirtless Spider-Man and shirtless Jeff Ramsey and... What you gonna sure, do? Shirtless few hundred other people that decided to get shirtless at the same time. Really? You miss it. That sounds insane. Well, Greg. that's why it happened. Mm. They didn't mind me taking my shirt off. They didn't mind Jeff taking his shirt off. Mm-hmm. But when I said, I can't make you, but I encourage you to take your shirt off, audience, that's when they thought the line was crossed. And that's when they felt they needed to stop the panel. Yeah. And tell everybody to put the shirts back on. Man, did they allow you to continue the panel after? They did. Okay. Yeah. And then I had many a talking to, many, many a meeting afterwards with Pax Foes, but we're, Good old I, we're not Miller. banned. It seems yeah. like we're not banned. I was at home playing video games, going. getting yeah. phone calls from you all hours of the night. You, of you, you had a meeting. I don't know. I, we, uh, my, my dog, Nick96 <laughs> from Massachusetts, <laughs> yes, showed yes, up. That was yeah. it. I had to call you right there. No, there was another one. Was there really? I might have blacked that one out. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> sounded pretty black. Yeah, it, it was great, though. It was well, it's, it's, it's the thing is that I, when I woke up Sunday morning, because mm. well, we did Saturday night at PAX East, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we partied and we did all our stuff. We had all our panels. Panels were great. Everything's amazing. Yay. Saturday was my let's run around the show floor, see games, take appointments, mm-hmm. figure mm-hmm. stuff out. After the show clo- closes, Joey and I go to the RT community meetup, Rooster Teeth, commu- its own community, mm-hmm. throwing their own meetup where they sold tickets and they paid for their own venue and they had food really? and booze there. Yeah, it was great. Mm. Uh, I got there. Craig was there. Jack was there. A whole bunch of other folks were there. Uh, but mainly the community. We hung out with them, had a great time. And then Joey and I were like, it's time to leave. Let's go meet up with the kind of funny kids because there was even a different kind of funny community so meetup happening. We went there. We went to another bar. They came up. We all had a great time hanging out. But the problem was a tipping point came. When someone said, oh, hey, it's my birthday, to which I said shots. And as you know, I don't do shots at meet and greets because it always ends badly. Yeah. And this ended badly. Not yeah. not super badly, mm-hmm. but it is that thing of I made plans with Joey to meet her in the lobby at 930 so we could go over and do our Twitch stage presentation at 1040. Joey's like, I'm down here whenever you are. And I'm, like, oh, I'm just about to climb in the shower. Did I say? Yeah. Did I say before that? She's like, we said 930. I was like, oh, I forgot that part. Now, Greg. Yeah. I just got an email. Wait, not me. A very, very, very cool email that I want to confirm that I can say things before I say Please something. Do. Okay. Uh, Is it a response to the email I sent? I can confirm. Yeah. I can confirm that I will be one of the first people in the world to play Kingdom Hearts 3. Get fucking hype, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening. I'm very excited about this. Let's go. I'm not oh. allowed to say when or where. Okay. <laughs> but I'm allowed to say that I'm going to be one of the first people. Well, then I'll throw it's out real. the question. It's real, Greg. Because what happened is one of our... Folks, watching this show, Kind of Funny Games Daily, I wrote in to uh, YouTube. No, what, uh, I'm doing it all YouTube, over now. Yeah. No, no, they wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to part, be part of the show mm-hmm. and ask that question. Because I guess there's rumors, leaks, influencers out People there saying stuff. People have been stuff. tweeting out saying so that, that they is, got invited. That's what I said to the person on that email chain. Mm-hmm. Of like, hey, can we confirm this? We can confirm Tim Getty's going to play Kingdom Hearts Hell 3. yeah, man. At some point in the I'm future. I'm very hyped about this. Okay, good. I'm yeah. glad you are. I'm going to personally talk to Goofy and be like, why'd you lie? <laughs> I didn't know, motherfucker. I love the motherfucker. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, like the show. Watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job, you need to keep us honest. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Use the Google form to tell us what we were wrong about, what we screwed up, so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listening on podcast services around the globe. Of course, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Just like why not Pete did. Why not Pete wrote in and said, happy Monday, I wanted to ask how PAX was from a game's perspective. Did anything catch your attention or surprise you? From an out- outside perspective, this year's PAX seemed light on gaming news and announcements, and I was wondering if you had a similar experience as an attendee. Thanks, and have fun in Mizzou. More on Mizzou later. Um, um, Spyro. How do you want to handle... Well, that wasn't a PAX announcement, was it? I think it was timed with PAX. It seemed like it. I saw a lot of videos of people at PAX panel panels being very excited about the Spyro 
stuff at random panels making, oh uh videos are I, I don't think activision had a panel there but i do think that it was timed they had ads there for spyro on the big yeah, on the big spyro's adding hard man yeah, they're yeah. everywhere and that's what they should do mm-hmm. um i want to talk to you yeah timothy gettys mm-hmm. How do you want to handle PAX Impressions? Because I played a bunch of games there. I have things to say. Mm. Of course, programming note for all of you. Tim and I are going to Mizzou. We'll talk about that in a second. But what that means is that we're recording the Kind of Funny Games cast on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's first off because we're back in town. Secondly, the embargo for God of War will be up so we can talk about that free form. Mm -hmm. No spoilers. Uh, So we're going to record it live, obviously. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Come watch it there for just a buck. Then it'll immediately go up as the video for everybody on demand and as the audio for everybody on demand. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then publish for everybody. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games the following Monday. How do you want to handle my PAX impressions? Is that show so jam packed already? All right, cool. What do you want to know, Tim? I got notes. I I got things. Let me know what games did you play? Like, was there a lot of cool stuff? I mean, I'll start with the big stuff. Because to answer the question here with why not Pete of like, uh, there wasn't many game announcements. I feel like PAX isn't, especially PAX East, that's not really the event where big announcements happen. Like, I feel there used to be there. more news out of panels and things. But I, I think that that's just totally changed with I agree. directs and with blogs. 100%. And, you know, I, d- I definitely feel like PAX has evolved into becoming, hey, this is the indie showcase. Yeah. You go there to see all the, the indie mega booths, what it's all about. You want to see these other guys. PAX used them. to be the place where, in a modern day example, we would get the Division DLC plan. Yeah, here's a roadmap or, or something here's like that. Yeah. Here's a roadmap. Here's DLC we're planning. Something, here's something a character like we're adding to a game you already knew about. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, like you're saying, yeah, that is definitely the blogs thing, mm-hmm. the social sites. Uh, I agree with that thing for why not Pete. I think there was, but I don't think that's what people go to expecting anymore. I think that I, it's funny, you know, I was joke, joking around with Joey about it, of like when we're going between panels and stuff of, it's crazy to be at that show and think about when it was year one and two and it was Damon and me going to panels, seeing stuff, running back to the press room, writing up an article, publishing it about some news, yeah, that came out about Capcom Street Fighter, this, the, the other, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what the show is. The show very much is go on the floor, find some cool games, and see what's all about. What I got to do, I'll start with a big one for you, is go behind the closed doors and have a private Nintendo Switch demonstration. Yeah, you did. Where I played a whole bunch you of played Nintendo the Crash games. Bandicoot game? No, I did not play Crash really? Bandicoot. Really? No. Dude, I am so impressed with how it looks running on Switch. Yeah. It looks fucking great. Okay. It's not for okay. and all that stuff. But man, I, I thought this was going to get a huge downgrade. And yeah. We'll see. I still haven't gotten my hands on it. But from everybody that was playing it at PAX, they're like, this is very impressive. Oh, okay. What I got to play was Sushi Striker finally. Oh, okay. That one where I'm yeah. mashing the sushi uh, plates and then throwing out. I'm bad at it. Real mm. bad. Lost mm. a couple of the demo fights in there while the guy next to me was just cleaning clocks. Then we did multiplayer. The guy destroyed me. But it's enjoyable, and I like it. I'm going to play it. It's got this, you know, I, it, it was a standout from that direct where they debuted it for me. Where, mm. hey, here's, they showed all these games, and I here's thought that looked cute. Because it looked, game. yeah, exactly. Ma- but you can match way more than three and then throw match the plates. Six, There's, pa- you can match 12 or oh, 19 if you get crazy. 19? Yeah, you're getting, you're getting nuts. And then you got all these special powers you're building over there to throw the plates at the guy and knock them down. And then it's got this uh, whole bunch of anime like cutscenes for mm-hmm. it and stuff that are actually trying to tell you a goofy little story about this world where fish don't exist. So you have Is to. Like a tongue in it? I don't know if Lick of Tongue's in it because I don't get that reference. Uh, but you go through, throw the plates. It was an enjoyable game. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to play it on Switch even though I'm bad at it. But you go through, level up all these different things. I played that Donkey Kong Tropical, Tropical Freeze. Freeze. Did you play with Funky? I did play with Funky, yeah. of course. He has more Funky hearts. Mode, he dude. has more yeah. hearts, and he has that mm-hmm. surfboard he can glide down on and stuff. I still don't see what the hubbub is about and why people love it's this so game so much. Good. It's so good. I'm just it's saying so it was good. just it was Donkey Kong. You know Do you what like, I mean? Yeah. Do you like any 2D platformer? I like Mario. Do you? Yeah. Do you really? I do, yeah. I don't know. I don't trust you. Okay, well. Yeah. This one, it was. It played well and was pretty. What do you want me to do? Played Wolfenstein mm-hmm. on the Nintendo Switch. It's Wolfenstein 2. What else can I say? That's what you want. I don't, there's a lot more you could say. Did it play well? Did it did it, play well. Did you? Was it, uh, how big of a downgrade was it? It's a big downgrade. Yeah. It's a big downgrade. It doesn't look anything. I mean, it, it doesn't... It, it looks like... If somebody who as I put, you know, I don't know how many hours, 10 hours into play, the PlayStation 4 version mm-hmm. of it, it definitely doesn't look like that, yeah. but it runs and it plays well. Well, and yeah, that's the thing is like d- downgrades, whatever, they, they they can be detrimental to the experience yeah. or they can just be, obviously it doesn't look as good as the PlayStation version, yeah. but it's like, oh shit, if you're just playing for the first time, does it, from what you've played, does it seem like a... M- Fine way to play the game. It's a fine way to play the game. Mm. Yeah, I, it's it's similar for Doom, where I have. Did to you do, play I, with the uh, motion controls? At I all? did not. Come on now, who do I look like? You know what I mean? Know somebody that likes precise aiming. No, that's not what I like to do at all. You know that. The big one, I think, probably the game that caught me the most off guard: Dead Cells. 
Yeah. You, you heard about this oh, one? Yeah, You've been playing cool. this one? I haven't played it. But is it yeah. Uh, I was going through. It's a roguelite. Uh, you know, you drop into this character. You're this like green blob. You get to inhabit the dead bodies or whatever. Of course, this has been on Steam Early Access forever, I guess. But nobody gave a shit about it until it comes to Nintendo Switch. Right? Am I right? Mm-hmm. Uh, You're right, Greg. Thank you. Uh, uh, since Rogue Legacy, I feel like I've been looking for a roguelite that I would be like way behind. And this seems like it's going to be it because it is you play through, make, you know, progression. Uh, or you progress through the levels. Obviously, you die. It's permadeath. You start as another character. But when you go back, you do keep some of the gold you have to unlock new abilities or unlock new perks. And you do get some, uh, what I was looking at, you know, you defeat a boss. If you defeat the bosses, you get abilities that stick with you and keep going back. Are you saying roguelike or roguelite? L-I-T-E. Okay. There, rogue like is a thing. Road, uh, rogue light L I T E implies that it's like a rogue like, but it's lighter than that. Similar to what rogue rogue legacy is a rogue light. Because I, I I'm just gonna be fucking real about this. Please do, Greg. Uh, me and Andy were talking about this a while back. Lay it on me. And I just don't like the, the, the I know a lot of the gaming like words and stuff, and like I know what they're talking about. Yeah. But I feel like everybody's just heard other people say it and they just then now they just say it. At some point I'm one hundred percent with you. Yeah. That at some point I I I was like, Wait, are you saying light or like? And somebody corrected me or said did it and then explained the difference. And I when I put out the tweet about it and actually spelled out rogue light, a lot of people hit me up I'm like, holy shit, I thought it was rogue like and I'm like, Well, it might have been Depending on who you're listening to, it might have been when I was probably fucking it up. But like, yeah, there's a whole I, I, there's an article from Hardcore Gamer out there that I was sharing with people of like the difference between them. Rogue Legacy is a rogue light because it's more it's using it's kind of like when we used to say RPG like mechanics, mm-hmm. RPG light. Yeah, it's, I don't know. The light is throwing me off. There, like I, I understand. I'm gonna get the light as well. But like I've heard, I've never heard light before. Um, but with the like, yeah. What confused me is okay. Where does this go back to? Mm, because mm, it's like mm. souls. Like I get that. I understand what that yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. Because souls is something that's contemporary and makes sense. Play Dark when Souls people, on uh, the Switch, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll Same thing. It just it plays like it plays like Dark Souls. Sure, that's good. Yeah. Uh, when people are talking about rogue likes, I was like, Rogue Legacy is that? Yeah. And I'm like, are people seriously fucking starting this whole thing from Rogue Legacy? It seems like kind of a, like a random game to get its own kind of Souls-like word into yeah. the vernacular of gamers. No. But then it's like, where does this go back to? Was there a game called Rogue back in the day? Was it made by the people that made Mist? I think so. I looked Mist it up one Light. time. I did some some Wikipediaing. Okay. But like, I just think it's fucking weird. Do you know what Rogue is? Like does anyone know what Rogue is? <laughs> Just what Rogue was, period, before yeah. it was Rogue-like. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like based on old PC fucking games and boring-ass crap. So it's like, but what about that makes this a Rogue-like? You can go read the hardcore. I know we're getting into this. Yeah. I'm just saying, I feel like people throwing words around. They are. 100% they people are throwing words around. No, I... I, I Sounds like a Jared Petty question. Yeah, it's a yeah no yeah you nail down. Jared Petty could tell you the whole history of this fucking thing and tell you what the guy's daughter was named when he... I just think I mean? it's weird that people use it so, like... And, uh, like it's commonplace when it's like I, well, nobody I mean, knows what thing. it actually means. Here's the thing: is I think you, I think I'm, if you were to stop people and ask them, "Hey, what's a rogue light game?" or and even if you said rogue like game, they're gonna run through. Uh, yeah. they're gonna th- rogue legacy in a million games like that, right? Mm-hmm. And I think if you were to say, "Okay, cool," but that's well, that's light. What is like? I think that's where people would get really stumped. Okay. I also played Travis Strikes again. Yeah? Did yeah. you like it? I did, actually. I was okay. surprised. I have That game, I'm always like, I don't know what that's all about. But it's, I was running around, beating people up with my lightsaber. I'm, like, I'm okay. down for a couple hours in that world. I don't okay. need too much. Uh, another I'm happy one, it seems like a A cool one I played at the Indie game. Mega booth. Now we're getting outside of just the Nintendo time. Yeah. Necrosphere. Okay. It's, it's a platform with just two buttons, and the two buttons are left and right. So you run, right, and the sphere comes into play because there are spheres in the levels that when you run into, they bounce you up. So it's a game that was being demoed with a PlayStation controller, but then when I, there was a line, he handed me his iPhone. So it's got those mobile game tendencies, but you can play it there. Either way, I played it. I played it, or I only played it on the phone, but watched enough of it on there. It's actually really cool in the way of like fuck, like trying to figure out how much speed you need to have going, mm, what, what where you need to correct in the air and stuff like that. It could be super simple, but I actually had a good time with it. Cool, and I'm about that. Uh, finally, got to play Stay, that Xbox One game I've been talking about forever. That the one they announced. Um, it's the one where you're on the other side of a computer terminal with somebody who wakes up in a dark room with another computer terminal and they're like locked in there and you have to you it's kind of like emily is a way where you have different where you have different uh choices to their responses or questions to that and then it branches off and goes in different That's places cool. it was it was very cool i like that a lot um i want to give a sp- i saw i you know this 1979 the revolution game Mm-mm. it was on pc a while ago uh now it's coming over to console so i was actually gonna give it the time of day or whatever seems like another 
telltale kind of thing, you know what I mean? Going or life is strange, make choices, see how it plays out, but it's playing life out is during, strange light. Exactly. <laughs> life is strange light. Uh go through there. I hate running backwards is over at the Devolver booth. It has the best title of the show, I think. I hate running backwards where you're running backwards and you're shooting forward. And you have to like so you're running and shooting enemies. You're running backwards with your back to the camera. You're running so you're running towards the top of the screen, shooting towards the bottom of the screen, and then there's like different things that are getting in your way towards the top of the screen while you have mm. bad guys chasing you in the back too. It'll make sense when you see it. You, I mean, it makes sense. I just don't know. It sounds weird. Well, you're a weird guy, and yeah. I like you, all right? Uh-huh. Finally got to play uh, Russian Subway Dogs on the PlayStation Vita, because Vita lives. Yeah, Vita uh, lives. Yeah, another one. Sure. Okay, cool. Arcade Bark. Get the get the people to drop their food, eat their food, keep the dog alive. I'm all Man. about keeping dogs alive. You know yeah, that. I get it. Dude. You've been doing it for 13 years. Thank you very much. Went and played Mask of Semblance. Now, this one got me to come do it. You know why? Because the email... I have a baker's dozens list of reasons on why you should play this game. This guy, huge best friend, yeah, wanted me to come play this game. It, it, it sounds sounds familiar. I think it just got announced because this is their first thing. They're still working on it. They're years out, but it's this uh, action RPG you run through and play. And they did all the art stuff by hand. Looks really pretty. I'm all in. Okay, I'm excited for it too. And those are my packs. Oh, games that start. Oh, there was one that didn't. My, my video didn't save because I was doing them all on Instagram. One um, Overland, I think. Harris Foster is working on it. Harris Foster from the Game Scoop video game. Uh, awesome. It's like Oregon Trail post-apocalyptic. Go through, ch- make choices on where you go for supplies. Try to last as long as you can. Looked really cool. Played it. Enjoyed it. Fun. <sighs> Let's get through more housekeeping. Let's get that housekeeping. was housekeeping because that was the PAX recap. I put it on there. That's a new story. I would say. It wasn't. Well, I didn't That's include it all in the Roper Report because I didn't know where to put it and I wanted it Roper to. Roper Report. Light. Also happening in housekeeping today, Andrea is hosting the Games Beat Summit. You can watch it on twitch.tv slash Games Beat starting at 1.05 p.m. Because Nick can't ever shut his fucking face. This show will run into it. Sorry for your opening remarks, Andrea. Uh, Janina uh, Gavankar, of course, friend mm-hmm. of the show, Star Wars lady. Uh, she'll be on with Andrea at 4.40 p.m. So enjoy that. Next piece of housekeeping for you, Greg and Tim are going to Mizzou. Hell yeah, we are. We won't be on the show tomorrow. I'll, re- I'll recap the weeks of host for or the week uh, hosting for you. Uh, we're doing a meet and greet Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. at CJ's Hot Wings on Broadway. Come be in a kind of funny video. We are coming to Mizzou to make videos. We'd like you to be in this one. And then, today, Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Brooklyn, but I'll get to that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. Thank you very much. Uh, Number one, we have movement on that Rockstar lawsuit from forever ago. This is via IGN. Former president of Rockstar North, Leslie Benzies, has hit a bump in the road in his lawsuit against Take-Two Interactive after a New York Supreme Court ruled in favor of the publisher when it came to the subject of royalties, which forms the crux of Benzies' suit. Benzie sued Take Two for $150 million after taking a lengthy sabbatical in September 2014. He claimed that the company tried to force him out, saying that Take Two Interactive, Rockstar, and the Hauser brothers were withholding royalties. The recent ruling states that the 2009 royalty plan signed by Benzie's, quote, provides for discretionary royalty payments by the allocation committee and contains no language mandating equal payments to the principals, end quote. Hmm. Benzie's had argued that the Hausers received more money from the agreement than he did at his expense. The uh, the ruling has put an end to that aspect of the case, but he still, quote, remains entitled to receive certain royalties as part of his compensation. The case still has legs, though. As the document continues, quote, the complaint sufficiently alleges a breach of the 2012 employment agreement based on salary and stock allegedly withheld from the plaintiff. So more to that, but man, being an adult and yeah, successful apparently say, sucks, dude, huh? Adult stuff, man. This this is taxes on a whole other level. You and I are not aware not of how this quick. works. Whenever Nick starts talking about financials of this business, we glaze over. About. He has no idea what he's talking about. So, so yeah, I can't even imagine what Leslie's going. But through. it's uh, you know this it goes hand in hand with a story that's making the rounds today. But I didn't put in here that uh, Grand Theft Auto Five is the most successful entertainment property of all time. And it's wow. it's uh, it's getting making the rounds. Uh, Games Beat has it up. It was another I uh, think like Market Watch had it up, and it was an infographic, pretty much, but basically showing like here's how much Avatar's you know investment was in the f- f- film. Here's how much it made. Here's a similar investment from GTA, and the fact that it's more than six billion dollars now come yeah. back. Man. So you understand why suddenly I think for somebody Leslie Benzie, a name that I remember I remember being kicked around with Rockstar for as long as Forever I've heard of it, yeah, yeah, right, that there would be this, you know, discrep- uh, discrepancy here and arguments for it, but it always sucks to see that. It does, I want to believe everybody's being good out. to each other. Yeah. 
Once that type of money gets involved, things can get pretty dicey. Yeah. Thank God we'll never make that kind of money. Thank no. you for that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Final Fantasy 15 and Tomb Raider have some kind of crossover. Why coming. not? <laughs> GameSpot reports, looks like some kind of collaboration between Final Fantasy 15 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider is heading our way. The brief teaser came today via Square Enix during a panel at PAX East. Fuck you, no news. Uh, below, you can see the, the slide during the panel, and this is via IGN. The crossover is said to be coming soon, but that's all we know so far. If I told you, Greg, yeah, that on Final me. Fantasy 15 was going to collaborate with ramen noodles, what yeah. would you tell me? Of course they're. Yeah. I believe it 100%. Cup, cup noodles. Yeah. If I told you that they were going to collaborate with Assassin's Creed. Sure. What would you say? Of course, yeah. Really? I, I I, I'm doing, that's, that's, Are you talking about when? Like, na- like when? At what point do you think? At any point, honestly. Even the fact that it's already happened, I still think it's fucking weird. If I told you that Final Fantasy 15 was going to collaborate with Half-Life... That's where I say it's a bridge too far. Yeah, but it happened. Oh my God, did it really it, happen? It did. It's, did you know that? No. Yeah, yeah. I didn't pay attention happened. to that one. That's a fucking thing that. for the PC version of Final Fantasy. So this is like, okay, yeah, they're just going to keep going. They're well, this one makes more going. sense, right? Square trying it to promote does, a Square it game. It does, yeah. But yeah, I just, man, this game, the gift that keeps on giving, the game yeah. that'll never stop coming. When's the last time you played Final Fantasy? 15? Last time I was played was when I beat it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm come back. So none of this is wet in your whistle. Mm-mm. What if it was a crash? What if they did something with Crash? No. No, even Crash, a Crash Bandicoot Wampa Fruit nah, side dude, I'm quest. Done. I'm done with Final Fantasy 15. Okay. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Okay. I wish it was better, but I enjoyed it. Okay. Well, that sounds right. really depressing the way you it said is, it. It's depressing yeah. when you wait 10 years for something and it isn't finished. Sure. Sure. <laughs> then they keep finishing all the parts I don't want them to finish. Well, I, no, we I, don't need to go down this rabbit hole. It's, well, I was going to say. It's a dark place. So. W- when do you think it became you got over the surprise and shock of them doing these weird things then these weird partnerships I mean, I'm still shocked Okay, that they, that it's still because I remember when for me it was Peace Walker granted mm-hmm. I know Konami not that but I think in the same Here's how Japanese companies run their games like when Peace Walker was putting Mountain Dew shirts in there mm-hmm. and the the calorie mate and all that jazz like in like they were selling Uniqlo shirts and stuff like that uh, that was really when I was like oh wow like they're not afraid to Clown around, even when yeah, they crazy put taxi. Monster Hunter stuff in there. Yeah, Crazy Taxi, obviously. Yeah, pizza Hut. Of course, that was a bit different. That one I understood. Mm-hmm. I liked having real-world markers in the game. That I don't think yeah. Mountain Dew shirts in this period piece called Peace Walker. I didn't yeah. think. I mean, Final Fantasy XV, very successful game. And yeah. continues to be very successful for them. So it's like, I, I totally understand what's going on. They're, and if they want to have fun and get wacky, have fun. Get wacky. It's, it's just not for me. And, like, that sucks because I, Final Fantasy XV ongoing plan i should be more interested yeah. than i am but i got what i was gonna get from that game okay number three in the roper report it's time for the best selling or most downloaded psn games of march this comes of course from the playstation blog ps4 games number one far cry 5 number two mlb the show 18 number three a way out number four grand theft auto 5 of course number five nba live 18 number six ghost recon wildlands number seven battlefield one number eight Titanfall 2 Standard Edition, mm, number nine, Monster Hunter World. That game. Yeah, of course. Uh, number t- nine, Monster Hunter World hanging on, and number 10, Gang Beasts. Uh, nice to see Far Cry 5 get out there. Uh, yeah. Not uh, surprising, I'd say, based on all the UK news last week, yep. that it's the best selling Far Cry of all time or whatever. A way out, mm-hmm. man, came and went. And I, I still want to play that game, but I just missed it. Yeah. And then I just don't know how that happened. I mean, it, it, the, it, the, this is another one of those, I feel, what's. The difference between being in the industry and being a consumer is what happened with GDC. GDC, uh, this came out the Friday of GDC, and it was like, I still am all about that game, but I didn't have time during that week. And then it was PAX East, and now it's Mizzou, and then it's God of War, and yeah. then it's also Far Cry 5. Far, it came out the same week of Far Cry 5, right? Uh, like, we got to put some not, time aside right just play through. 100%. I, can't, I think the game looks rad. I really want to play it. It's just... A bad time on the this side of the industry if you're traveling around doing all these events and stuff. Yeah, I think my thing is it looked so good, and then I saw a bunch of the reviews, and they weren't all glowing. Yeah. So I was like, ah. Yeah, I feel like it's such a unique experience. I, I want to do it. Yeah, let's just do it, man. Okay, let's man. do like Dude. Emily was away. Get mm-hmm. some brews. Play mm-hmm. through this. Mm-hmm. Fuck some people in prison. I mean, fuck some people up in prison. Or do I? <laughs> no, nah, here's your top 10 PSVR games. Number one, Moss. Number two, Job Simulator. Number three, PlayStation VR Worlds. Number four, Drive Club VR. Number five, Super Hot VR. Number six, Archangel. Don't buy that. Number seven, Drunken Bar Fight. 
I thought that was an interesting one to crack the top 10 here. Uh, number eight, Bravo Team, which I know everybody hated. Number nine, Knockout League. And number 10, Static. This looks like they watched the PlayStation VR show. Oh, did they, you think? Because a few of those got on there? Yeah, games. of course you should. Final episode of the season coming out this Thursday. This Thursday. Of course, it's up right now on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games if you want to give a buck. But I digress and kick it to my dog, Nick96, from Massachusetts. A man I've now met, taken photos with. I talked to him I let phone. him call you. He called Andrea as well. Mm-hmm. My dog Nick 96 writes in and says, Hello, Greg and Tim. Hi. Moss is the best selling PlayStation VR game for March. It didn't chart last month, but released on the 27th of February, so it's understandable. Most VR games, I don't hear people champing at the bit to get to them right away. What I'm saying, I guess, is do you think VR games are in a special space where it might not do well to the second or third week? I feel people are more hesitant to pick up a VR title compared to a standard game. Thanks again for everything you do. My dog Nick 96. P.S. Extra special thanks to all the best friends I got to meet at PAX this weekend. It's a good question. It's a good point. Um, yeah, I don't know if Moss was going to come out and set the world on fire on with the 27th of February to try to get it into the rest of the thing. But it also could have. I, I think the fact that Archangel, not a good game from what I've played before, right? Uh, Bravo Team, uh, Bravo Team panned in reviews but didn't get reviews out really before mm -hmm. uh, release, which was a problem. And then Drunken Bar Fight, I, I think it was one of those everybody's expectations were set of like, oh, it's this a janky, dumb, goofy it's goat a simulator. stupid thing we're going to get in there and fight around with. You'd think that if there was traditional hype for Moss or any VR video game that, yeah, even with a day or two, I forget how many days were in February. Kevin, how many days were in February this month? 28? So even with 24 hours there, if it was like a Far Cry 5, if it was yeah. I've preloaded, if it was all this different stuff, it could have made moves and gotten pretty high on the list for last month's games. But I, I think it's more just the AAA ability of, yeah. of these things, where it's just like the, the any of these titles aren't going to be huge like games that sell for day one no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. Like even looking at the PS4 games, like, once you get down, I mean, I guess these are all, like, the, even the top ten, these are all games I'm like, I can see, except for Gang Beasts. But uh, you walk into it, day, oh, day, the okay. day of the game coming out, there's going to be people buying that game. 100%, there's yeah. a bunch of other games that don't hit that threshold that aren't in the top ten that they come out and they're not like, ah, oh, day one, I'm ready. To, like, you didn't pre-order it, but I know I'm going to go and buy it that day. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I'll, I'll, next time in the mall, I'll get it. Sure. And I think that and VR games are kind of in that category. Yeah. And, but it's also a much more niche thing of people that have VR. And I think it's like casually they'll be on the um, the PSN. No, no, not even that. I think just like PSN just looking through and be like, oh, there's a new VR game. Sure. I haven't played with my VR for a while. I'll give this a shot. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's a much more placid lake when you talk about what's happening with playstation vr where it is oh man lake placid man classic great movie, movie great movie uh oh man you know i've heard great things about moss i know coming up i know to be excited for moss but yeah i don't know if i'm champing at the bit as my dog nick mm -hmm. says i would just sit there and have it preloaded ready to go do it it's more of a especially because it's a production still to an extent to play a vr game where it's like yeah. cool i'm gonna set aside that time on the weekend I'll get to it when it comes around Saturday. I'm not going to run around. And I know I'm still seeing a lot of, uh, and I'm not stumping for the game. I'm in it, What obviously, but Island Time, I'm still getting a lot of tweets about it. Like, oh, man, I just picked it up, and you're really great, and then blah, blah, blah. It is, it is a slower burn because I yeah. feel like there's not as much competition. I mean, I feel like the Star Wars Battlefront VR experience, like that you'll see a spike. Sure. You know, on the, the day one. Uh, but, yeah, for all these other things, they're just smaller titles. When you get there, you get there. Number four. A very short Roper report, just an update for you. Resident Evil 7 has officially sold more than 5.1 million units worldwide. Congratulations. So get ready for, for more of that and another great VR title. Yeah, and uh, you know, a great Resident Evil game. And those are really good sales numbers uh, compared to some of the earlier titles. Not so much compared to the, the action-based ones, but I think this is enough that we might see another one in this style. Yeah, oh, 100%. I definitely think you will. Yeah, and yeah. I hope they... I hope they don't get too hung up on continuing the story kind of thing. I'd rather it be like, let's just... I mean, that, that was the biggest problem with Resident Evil 7 is that it wasn't just a total, total reboot, total first thing. It was the seventh game. Yeah. What are you going to do, Tim? I don't know, man. Want different things than people give us. Tim, I'm excited for whatever's going to happen mm -hmm. with Resident Evil 8 mm -hmm. or maybe just Resident Evil or yeah. whatever they do with the Resident Evil franchise from here. But that's so far away. It is. If I want to know what came to the digital mom and grop shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Do, 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 yeah. Uh, out today, The Bunker on Switch. 
The Bunker. That's it. I don't know anything oh, about it. Do you yeah. know anything about it? Nope. A lot of Switch games come out these days. Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. New dates for you, though. Boss Key has announced Radical Heights in 80s free-to-play Battle Royale shooter. It comes to early access on Steam tomorrow. It is self -pu self-published. Okay. And there is a very long trailer uh, that you can go watch and see what it's all about. Looks rough around the edges, but it's early. Access. I walked in watching you guys watch it. Yeah, didn't know what it was. Nick I thought it was says he's weird... super into it. He'll never play it. He'll never play it. Not never. once. Not even. Not even once. He won't even remember it after no. today. You know what I mean? However, Emmett Watkins Jr. will not forget. He writes in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says today. Boss Key, developer of Lawbreakers, announced a new game today. <laughs> it might already be talked about in the news, but if not, here's the link. Unlike the attempt to bring back the arena shooter with Lawbreakers, Radical Heights seems to be chasing the free-to-play Battle Royale craze with a strong 80s aesthetic and an interesting cash-based system. The game seems very different in both tone and gameplay, and it might have a better shot of getting an audience. So, I would like to know, what do you think this means for Boss Key? Does it... Does this look promising, or should they not even bother going up against the titan that is Fortnite? Considering that they quickly put Lawbreakers on the back burner due to a barely existent player base, I'm hoping this game does better. As someone who really liked Lawbreakers, I'd love to finally see them get some acclaim of some sort. What I point back to, Emmett, is in the last week, and I think I was on the Games Daily with it, but maybe I just saw it, but I'm pretty sure I was. Uh, 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 Bosky put out a statement that was very much foreshadowing a new game was on the horizon mm. saying hey here's the update on lawbreakers it didn't do it did not perform like we wanted it to or how we hoped it would do it we're moving it to free to play but even that's going to take time and money so to keep everything going and keep development to be able to continue development on lawbreakers we have to announce another game like we have to put out another game and start working on that to help get lawbreakers mm. where we want it to be and i know that it seems this is well, the lawbreakers boss key business especially today on the internet Strikes me in a very interesting spot where I feel like the people who played Lawbreakers liked Lawbreakers. And granted, that's not a huge number. And like you see that concurrent number tossed around in Reddit threads and on Reset Air and all this jazz. But they liked it. And I think people, for the most part, no, nah, I don't even know that. I know that I like Cliff Blazinski. I know that I like the people over there. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want them to succeed. I think the people who played Lawbreakers wanted to succeed. It seemed at a glance the people that I saw responding to the official statement from Law, uh, Bosky about Lawbreakers, about a new th property last week, were very much like, all right, cool, do what you got to do, we understand. But then there's so many haters who like to shit on people who don't hit the mark, that don't knock it out of the park. Obviously, I know Cliff Lazinski is a polarizing figure to some. Mm -hmm. Always been super nice to me, always been super nice to kind of funny. I digress. Um, I don't know. What the, for me, looking at Radical Heights today, it didn't do anything for me. I you know, I watched the trailer. I you know, I see it. I, I, 80s aesthetic, sure. It doesn't look like a game I'd want to play, but that's totally on a trailer first pass. I also you got there at what point in the trailer? Uh, I don't know. It was looks there gameplay? Generic to me. Was yeah. there gameplay? The, it's a long lead up to gameplay, which I thought. Ooh, I don't. I don't know if that's mm. the marketing move I would make because I would be like, if I'm a consumer and I jump in, I'm probably gonna bounce before then. I didn't realize what it was. So walking in, I was like. Like, oh, is this like a new Fortnite map or something? A new Fortnite, like, skin and look? Yeah. Because it isn't that crazy different. Uh, and then after a while looking at it, and I wasn't actually watching. I was, like, sitting with my desk, yeah, just, yeah. like, looking over every once in a while. I was like, oh, dude, is GTA fucking doing it? And, like, having a Battle Royale mode yeah. that they're adding? And, like, it, it just is downgraded visually to yeah. like, be able to. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. And then after you explain it, I'm like, yeah. huh, all right. Yeah. I feel like. I don't know, and I, I mean, I don't. I, I think we're on the same show. We, we've talked about when Fortnite was like, "Oh man, we're putting a battle royale," and they're like, "All right, good luck." Crazier things have happened before. I didn't think what I saw looked super impressive, but I understand this early access. Yeah, I understand that they're working on it as they go. I understand all these different things. To Emmett's question, right? Of what does this mean for Boss Key? I think this is one hundred percent. We need to try to save Cash the studio. It's like we, we need, need to money. make we money. Need, we need something that like can be a source of revenue yeah. to do the things that we want to do. And if you put out a free to play game that you know people are just going to keep the the few, the people that play are going to keep paying, yeah. then you have a, you know, yeah. cash reserve to be able to go out and do other games. Is that like a fun thing to hear? No, but it's realities of everything I like that they're at least being transparent about it's it. It's business, right? And, and there's I like that they're saying, "Hey, we're doing this to fund this." To help fund it. I mean, I don't think they've been blatantly on it like or not, I'm sorry. I don't think they've ever said like I, I'm I wonder how 
how the ledgers look right now for the studio period. Like, you know what I mean? And I don't know. I know Nexon published uh, Lawbreakers and I know all these different things and the, the scope of Lawbreakers changed along the way and so on and so forth. The long and short of it is there's a team of talented people who love video games trying to make video games. And I think that they want to keep doing that. And like you're saying, yeah, that this is a game. And I think the fact that it's early access, the fact that I think it looks and this is I think Lawbreakers visually was stunning. I think this game looks very early. And I think the fact that it's coming out so soon is we need people to buy. It's, there's a $15 founders pack, right, to get in and let, let alone the in-game microtransactions to be able to do and all this different stuff. I think that's what this is. Is like, cool, like we need revenue to continue to generate. And so I'd be interested when it's, because I, I know that for Lawbreakers, Cliff has been so honest in interviews and had a whole bunch of different GameSpot uh, interviews and like pieces up about like what's going on and what's really happening. And I, I'd love to eventually hear like, yeah, how long has this game been in development? And like, mm-hmm. when did this idea come about? And when did it start? And when did, like, we're all going to get that eventually. Yeah. But it's just an interesting move. And it's, yeah, the reality of business, I think, of like, cool, we need to be generating income. And so here's an idea we think we're, we like and we're behind. And it's got Nick's attention and Joey was even saying she like the aesthetic and it looks fun like there's yeah. something there we'll see what happens it's just again a, an, an argument not even an argument a question nick posed of well are battle royale games the trend right now or are they the new genre is mm-hmm. it the fact that we you think of PUBG, you think of fortnite in these battle royale modes but then of course there's clones on phones and all these different things and gta's online's mode that's kind of like it but isn't exactly is this now a genre of game or is this a trend and there can only be a few? I, I think that's a lot of people are bringing that up. And I think that it, it could be both. Yeah. Uh, I do think that it has the potential to be a new genre. And I think that, you know, people saying like, oh, there's no room for this. There's already these other two things. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense because military shooters, there was a bunch of them. But yeah. with those, I wouldn't say that they were a trend. They're definitely a genre. Yeah. But they kind of died out and then they came back and like we had refinements and were modernized. I feel like we'll see a bunch of different takes on this and there's going to be a lot of learning going on about how to do things. We've seen it even with games of service over the last couple of years. There will come a point in the next few years where there's less of them. Sure. Then a couple years down the line, it'll come back in a different form. See, I think we're going to see more first. I think that, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't think that we're like at that. We're not at the top yet. We're still, yeah, we're still yeah, going, yeah, we're up, still going up for both games of service. And especially I think the sure. battle Royale games. Yeah. And like what you're talking about with a, a twist on it, right? Or like your own bring something to the table, which was of course, PUBG's argument when Fortnite did pop up and start, you know, doing the battle royale mode is the fact that for this uh, lob or uh, Bosky game, it is this '80s insp- inspiration, which is evident with all the neon colors and mm-hmm. the world building they're doing there. They're doing a bunch of world building and arcade cabinets, and all this jazz. It is the fact that you're only you're riding BMX bikes around all the time. You know, Nick was watching it, and when they brought out like this quad rocket launcher, he's like, "Oh, that's the quad rocket launcher from." Predator, Commando, or whatever. Some movie that I wasn't even alive for. I'm kidding. I'm old, too. Uh, I think this is an interesting... It's going to be... Tomorrow is going to be very interesting when this game gets out and people get to play it and actually mm-hmm. see what it is. It's also a really cool marketing move of, cool, we're doing this tomorrow. This is a game we're putting out tomorrow. Early yeah. access. You didn't know what this game was. We're self-publishing it. We're doing bootstraps on it. Yeah. Yeah, weird. I mean, I, I'm always a bigger fan of, like, hey, we're doing this thing. Go do it now. Like, it's out now. Sure, sure. Uh, out tomorrow is a little less interesting um i i don't know i feel like the battle royale stuff is going to end up being similar to horde mode where yeah people came out and were trying to make games that are just horde mode but at the end of the day most of the time it's better served as a smaller part of a bigger package Mm. and i think that we're gonna start seeing really really refined versions of battle royale in call of duty division two and halo and and things like that And I think that that is a next step for whatever genre you want to, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. We'll figure it out as we go then. Uh, Also, new dates for you. IGN has this. BlizzCon 2018 will take place in Southern California at the Anaheim Convention Center. We know it well. Mm -hmm. On November 2nd and 3rd, Blizzard Entertainment has announced tickets to the main event will be available for purchase on two specific dates. The first will be on May 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific time, while the second will be on May 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Tickets will cost 199 US dollars uh, each and include admission to both days as well as a BlizzCon goodie bag. Uh, new, uh, under new dates, Firewatch is coming to the Nintendo Switch in spring at some point, And then Dead Secret comes to PlayStation VR and PS4 on April 24th. Yay. Deals of the day for you. Square Enix is having a spring cleaning sale. This is via GameSpot. Final Fantasy 15 is $18 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. 
the Xbox One version of the Deluxe Edition is $54. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, is on sale for $30. Final Fantasy X and X-2 Remastered, HD Remastered, are $12. You can even buy Final Fantasy IV and the compilations, Final Fantasy Origins and Final Fantasy Anthology. You're right. That's how that works. Nine uh, for the original PlayStation uh, for five bucks a piece. Then Best Buy is having a sale. This is so via GameSpot. I know GameSpot had them all today. Uh, Nintendo's big games rarely go on sale, but Best Buy is selling Super Mario Odyssey for fifty dollars this week. Forty dollars for Gamers Club Unlocked members, and also on Switch, Dragon Ball Xenoverse two for forty thirty two. Obviously with the thing, and then MXGP thirty or twenty four. Uh, plus on the Xbox and PlayStation four side of things, Call of Duty World War two, Burnout Remastered, and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Are all on sale as well, Best Buy. Cool. Tim. Yes. It's time for reader mail. Mm -hmm. But first, I'm going to tell you, it's brought to you by Brook Linen. You spend a third of your life in your sheets. They make a difference with how you sleep. Start getting better sleep with the best sheets ever at brooklinen.com. Tim, I mm -hmm. use these. We've talked about it before. I do as well. I'm a big fan. Which Love did them. you pick? Because my favorite thing was going to the website, mm -hmm. clicking around to figure out what m matched up well. Yeah. What did you What did you end up making? We talked about this before. I ended up getting there's one with a lot of it's white with blue stripes, mm -hmm. but it's predominantly blue. Yeah. Uh, you got the one the white with the, the black dots. I really like navy that. polka dots. Oh, they're navy. They're navy polka dots that match the navy sheets I got. That Jim mm. was impressed that I was able to color coordinate all this because I could look yeah, at it. Navy and navy. Yeah. It's you see what I did there? Crazy coordination. It, you know, yeah. shut up, man. I didn't, I'm not good at this well, stuff. Well, I'm upset because I wanted those, but. Uh, uh, Gia picked it all. I like ours, but my problem is, or not my problem, I, uh, I have an understanding of how things work, yeah. and I can't be getting these white sheets. I mess them up too quick. Oh, okay. So that's why mine predominantly blue. I'm not going to be mad at blue. I'm a big fan of it. I like how it looks. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Really like how it feels. Yeah, Those they're really soft, nice. right? Yeah. They're really nice. Okay. I, I like it because it, they're soft where they need to be soft, and they're not soft in other in other ways. Because like, there's the bottom one, but then there's that the top sheet, the top sheet, that yeah. weird middle sheet. Yeah. I like that. There's like it's it's thick. Yeah, it's not super soft. I like that the bottom one's super soft, mm -hmm. but the top mm -hmm. one it's almost like a light blanket. Oh yeah. wow, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'm just, real particular. I'm gonna have this. to check it out today and see if I agree with this light yeah. blanket. Because I mean, I, I like having a layer on me. Sure, and it's a really nice layer. Because sometimes the blanket is it's too much of a layer. Yeah. Huh. You're an interesting fella. <laughs> uh, these are the best, most comfortable sheets without a big markup. You can upgrade your nightly routine and help you feel more well rested every day. Most bedding is marked up as much as 300%, but Brooklyn says, nah, -uh! not today. Versatile colors and patterns you can mix and match to complement any decor. Brooklinen.com has an exclusive officer. Uh, nope, offer. <laughs> There's a police officer that will exclusively show up. Uh, for you, the listener, get $20 off and free shipping when you use the promo code GAMESDAILY, all one word, at brooklinen.com. Brooklinen is so confident that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code GAMESDAILY, all one word, at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code GAMESDAILY, all one word. Brooklinen, these are the best sheets ever. Somebody's birthday's coming up. Buy him sheets. Mm -hmm. Jonathan wrote in the kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, what the hell is Detroit become human about? The game is just over a month away and I have no idea what the story is. When it came to heavy rain, uh, heavy rain, it was marketed about Ethan's son being kidnapped and how far you would go to save someone you love. Then beyond two souls, it was all about Jody, her special powers and how she struggled with them escaping the authorities. However, when it comes to Detroit, we know it'll cover the themes of social rights and for artificial intelligence and what it means to be human and the parallel those themes can be drawn from. But those are just themes and not a plot. I'm sure the game I'm sure the game is difficult to market without spoiling, but should we be worried that they're not telling us more? I really disagree. I think they've done a really good job of explaining the, the plot of it. It's a revolution. Yeah. And revolution being seen from kind of different angles. Three different um, yeah, that's the thing is and I, I under I well, I understand, Jonathan, if you've missed certain parts of it, you've missed certain marketing beats, maybe you don't understand it. But yeah, there's three different AIs here. Uh the female Kara that we know from the Kara mm -hmm. demo. I'm not sure if she's Kara in the game, I forget. I don't. I've played the demos, and I'm like, I like it. I don't like want to. I don't I'm play, play anymore. Later. Just give yeah. me the game. Uh, and she's to very much the one who's gonna, you know, come from that whole uh, domestic violence scene that people are talking about. She's the one who's gonna break out of her AI protocol in this thing and be like, 
I'm a human. How do I deal with that? I, you yeah. know, I'm there's the Marches. there's the officer who gets pooped on all the time, and he's got to go in there and save the kid. And mm. people are mean to him because he's a robot. He's gonna be coming to grips with. I think he's gonna be the one who doesn't want to break away from mm-hmm. being a robot. He's happy there. And then there's the Marcus, other dude where you get to make the choice. Kind yeah, of like yeah, he's the leader of the he's pack. He's part of the revolution, but like, is it gonna be a violent resolu- revolution yeah. or not? I uh, like it. I like what we know. I like how how little we know about a lot of things, but how there's choice decisions and characters. Yeah. Like we know enough that. These characters are going to be different, but all dealing with the same situation. I mean, rest assured, you're going to see this ramp up hardcore now. A month out is usually now, yeah, when PlayStation really starts swinging for the fences and coming out and really talking about this stuff. So I'm sure you'll get more previews from it. I'm sure you'll get more marketing materials and stuff. But personally, yeah, that's all I really need to know. I think in, hey, we're telling this sci-fi story about... A, the, the thing that you're seeing in the news feel it feels like every week of somebody mm-hmm. being like oh we made an AI to do this and blah 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 and like hey I was gonna take us over one day it's a cool idea it's cool it, it seems interesting I'm excited to see where it I goes I hope it's great I hope so too Houston writes in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says hey Greg and Tim I want to complain why is my PlayStation 4 so goddamn loud all I'm trying to do is play a game and it sounds like it's trying to go to the moon what should I do send it into Sony get somebody to clean it or wait and get that Spider-Man PS4 Pro. Please, Shuhei. You tweeted about this this very week, Tim. If you're Houston's with a Z, what up, Zach? If not, hey, what up, Houston? He didn't put a Z on there. He just says Houston. Uh, yeah, no, man. It's ridiculous. I have a Pro, and it is so loud. Always sounds like a jet's taken off. Doesn't matter what's going on in the game. Yeah. And people are like, oh, you need to clean your thing. I clean it all the time. You get the I compressed get back, air? I get, I get compressed air. Now, have you done the thing, thing where you avoid the warranty and you get in there with the little screwdrivers? No, and take I, don't, I don't do all that. Okay. I don't do all I'm that. Not, I'm not judging. Um, maybe I should, but if that seems crazy. Uh, it's just it's weird because the last PS4, my older PS4 was the same way. Yeah. And I think the PS4 Pro is even louder. Wow. See, it's that thing. Well, somebody wrote in recently when we had this discussion. And I'm going to butcher some of this, so kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. But basically, right, there was this thing with the Pro that they sold it with two different fans. And if you get the lower end fan, it's crap. And if you get the higher end fan, it's not crap. I have a not crap PlayStation 4. My PlayStation 4, 4 Pro is quiet. And I was reminded this weekend, of course, I was traveling with my launch PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. uh, for God of War. And I was playing that thing. And that thing puts off heat. Like Joey had something behind it at one point. She's like, "Oh my god, I got, I got to move yeah. this. This bottle's on fire, and it also makes noise." I was watching Doctor Strange, a Blu-ray. Yeah, and it was distracting how loud it was. Mm. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, fucking figure your shit out, man. I hear you. I, yeah, I know. Uh, you can obviously uh, look online for a whole bunch of different responses for it. when my PlayStation Four launched. Yeah, I was making a bunch of noise, and I was like debating what to do on something. I I, I looked into. All right, cool. Remove these plastic stickers. Go in there. Take. And I'm like, you know what? This is a bridge too far. I'm going to pop off the thing. I'm going to compress air it. And that helped for a while. A little bit. It's still loud, but yeah. it's back to being super loud. So I'm, I'm what they call a wuss. I don't want to get in there and screw it up and break it and have mm-hmm. it not work at all. I'll deal with it being hot. And You're scared heavy. of PC gaming. I get it. What was that now? You're scared of PC gaming. That's 100% correct. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure you're not talking shit over there. Do you want to talk about Game Pass or do you want to talk about... talk about Game Pass a lot. Yeah, I know. Do you want to, uh, we're skipping that page. There's two Game Passes on it. We're done. How's that feel? Feels good. Joe writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can. It says, hey guys, hope you're all having a good Monday morning. My questions relate to Overkill's The Walking Dead game. Microsoft showed a teaser for one of the four playable characters on their Twitter with more to be revealed on their inside Xbox show. Do you think this signals that the game is close to release? And if so, do you think there is a chance the game is good or sells well? Thanks for all you do and hope you are enjoying God of War whilst the rest of us suffer in anticipation. Of course, we can't tell you anything about God of War. We'll talk about it on, well, Thursday I'll put up a Twitter video, Twitter post about it. I'm sure you will too. And then Friday, Gamescast. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say yes, no, and no. So yes, say- it means it's close to release. Yeah. No, it's not going to be good. There's no chance. And no, it's not going to sell well. Okay. Bold questions. I'm going to say yes, we're close to release because guess what? You got to fucking do something with this game. If this game doesn't come out before August, it's going to be even more fucked than... I can't... When was that first time we saw... I think we were at IGN, we, right? Do, I think, do we, we debut it at IGN? We were at IGN and it was so long ago that in the comics, they didn't get to Washington yet. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. That's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Uh, is the game good? Or is there a chance it's good? I think there's a chance it's good. I mean, it's, it's gone on forever, but Overkill are the Payday folks, right? Mm-hmm. They know what they're doing. They know how to make those games fun. People love Payday. Yeah. 
Like, I think there's a chance it's good. I, you know, don't get me wrong. Anytime there's quote unquote development hell, there's something stuck there. And it's to the point of keeping in mind that when we saw the original trailer, when we did the stuff at IGN, I was like, oh man, this is interesting. I'm very interested. Yeah. I don't, I can't tell you thing one about Overkill's The Walking Dead anymore. Cause I just, I'm whatever, whatever. You, you find, fucking release it, put out, just then I'll care. Then I'll mm -hmm. know something. I'll look into it if it's actually something I want to play. Uh, but I don't know about that. And is it going to sell well? No, it will not sell well. Yeah. I think that. The Walking Dead is an interesting franchise at the moment. I feel there's no goodwill behind the show anymore. Comic fans like you and me think comics are really great right now. Uh, I think, you know, Telltale's done a fine job with the Walking Dead franchise in terms of putting it out. But I do think from season one's heights, they've lost momentum, mm -hmm. especially going with season three and not have, you know, not ma making it be Clem or maybe that, you know, whatever. But I think th it'll be the real test will be how much momentum Telltale can get back with season four. Yeah. Because season four, all right, cool. It's the last season. It's the final season. This is the end. I think that is going to draw in a lot of people of like, oh, man, like, no, I've matters. skipped out since... There's stakes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought you said snakes. Stakes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, it, you said it. It registered wrong laughing? when I corrected it, but I still kind of not laugh. I think, yeah, I think if, even if you, like, did, you only did episode one of season two, you're like, oh, I'm fine. I think mm -hmm. wanting to know how Clem's story is going to end, whether yeah. it ends on a positive or a negative, will be interesting. You'll get in there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not too optimistic about it. I, I think that it being shown at the inside Xbox show means maybe it has a chance. I think it's a very slim chance of it being being good. I can see, at best, this game reviewing at around a seven. Hmm, interesting. Maybe seven, five. Maybe. Like I said, I don't know much about it. I didn't even see these playable character, the teaser for the playable character, but I guess it's just a teaser. Again, I don't even fucking know. Yeah. Is it going to be all, is it left for dead or is it going to be payday where I have like very specific things I need to be doing? I imagine it's payday. Mm. I like, I like the left for dead. Jump in, jump out. Let's fuck around. Yeah. But I guess, you know, whatever. Make your game. Uh, Aaron DeWood. DeWood. Writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can and says with all the hype leading around Nintendo's next big game to come out this year. If you can only pick one game to be released this fall, which would it be and why? Smash Brothers, Animal Crossing, Metroid Prime, or Pokemon for Switch? For the sake of argument, let's just say Smash isn't coming out this year unless you pick it. I can't wait to see Tim's anxiety, although I think he'll stick with Smash. Thanks for all you do, Spider-Man. I mean, Greg Miller and the Kind of Funny crew. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, know, you know, it's Smash. Now, like, is this I, based... It's based on everything. Okay. It's based on I can't. I want to play more Smash. Yeah. It's based on I want to play more Smash in HD on a plane. Uh, it's based on I want to put my Wii U away. Sure. It's based on I want new characters. And so I here's my question. It's going. And also, it's based on I think that that will be a very smart move for Nintendo for that game to sell very well, which make, puts them in a better position to make more games, do all that stuff. If you can only pick one to be released this fall, my question is this. I think, obviously, with all due respect to everybody here, right, I think the argument becomes, are you picking what you want to play or what you think benefits the company and the Switch the most? Mm -hmm. At which point, I think you can knock out Animal Crossing, you can knock out Metroid Prime. Mm -hmm. And then it's, do you want Smash Brothers or do you want po Pokemon? Yeah. And my question for you then, Mr. Nintendo, yeah. is obviously you, Tim mm -hmm. Geddes, want to play Smash Brothers. Yeah. Do you, if you were in charge of Nintendo right now and you wanted to get the best yield on investment, turn some money, get some stocks bumped up, I don't know mm -hmm. what business people do, would you pick Pokemon? No. Uh, I think... But Pokemon Go. <laughs> Yes, Pokemon Go. Uh, I, Pokemon is interesting because it can come out at any any point and sell Juggernaut in, numbers. insane, insane okay. numbers and then be iterated on over and over and over and there'll be two versions and this and that and all this stuff, right? It's going to make a lot of money. Um, I feel like with the Switch, they're in a uh, position they haven't been in a very long time mm -hmm. where they're kind of weird in between gens and... Uh, there's a lot more eyes on it and there's a lot more expectations and I think that they have a, a chance to broaden their appeal even more than it already is okay. uh, to the core gamers that might have wrote the franchise off a long time ago and I think that it's be a smart business decision for them to come out the gate with the right Pokemon game because then you can get Get people on that might have left a long time ago, might have never been on in the first place, like you. And if they get you, they'll have you for the rest of the generation when they iterate, when they put mm -hmm. out all this mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. If they fuck this up, Pokemon's like, the, you guys will never give it another shot. It's just like, all right, cool. Here, it's just more. It's just more. You know? Gotcha. What does that mean? I don't know. But with Ultra Sun and Moon coming out last November, I don't know how, how Game Freaks, how big their team is. I don't know how they're splitting things up. They have done things in the past where they've gotten the core game out the remake out the next gen or the the two versions or the the third version or whatever it is 
their pattern's all fucked up now. So looking back at what's happened before, it's really hard to tell what's going on. All the rumors going on right now are still pointing to 2018, but until that's confirmed, I don't believe it. I feel it doesn't matter with Pokemon because even if it were to come out in spring, it'd be great. Okay. Tim, mm -hmm. it's time to squat up. Yes. This is where one of you writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in video games. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody has fun. Today, Ian needs help on PlayStation. His PSN name is Rolled Goldilocks. It's like the Rolled Gold Pretzels Elocks. As usual, it'll be in the YouTube description. Quote, I know everyone is excited to see what Naughty Dog blows our minds with when they release The Last of Us Part 2. The story will be wonderful, I'm sure. Why is no one talking about the first installment's multiplayer, Factions Game Mode? People should play with me and discover why The Last of Us Part 2's multiplayer is what has me the most excited to play the sequel. What has me the most excited to play the sequel. Wow. Wow. That is a, That's a bold statement. statement and a that half. is a bold statement, Ian. I wouldn't be surprised if there was no multiplayer <laughs> on Last of Us Part Neither 2. Would I. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. There's probably a good chance it's there, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, we're just doing this this mm -hmm. time around. You know what I mean? People love factions, I know, but I don't know if they saw return on investment in terms of keeping the player community involved and actually monetizing it. Because like Uncharted, I know, sells hats and shirts and cosmetic stuff like that. They get people, it seems like, back in there. But the fact that Last every of us game... Battle Royale, man. Yeah, Battle Royale. Yeah. That'd be cool. I'll take it. I'll take it. Do it smaller, you know what I mean? Just team deathmatch. <laughs> <It's long laughs> uh, I was a ten people. <laughs> I have a rotating segment for you, Tim. Mm. It's called PS. I love this best friend XOXO. Not the morning show version, oh, the kind of funny games daily version, wow. which is better because Nick doesn't get involved. Mm. Billy the door writes in to kind of funny dot com slash KFGD and says more of a squad up success story ish. I was at PAX this past weekend and it was my first ever nerd convention. The first day I went alone. I've been a patron a patron since the beginning, but haven't met any other best friends in person. Then standing in line to get into the convention floor wearing my video games or cool shirt. I hear hey. Are you a best friend? Best friends Kyle and Matt were nice enough to let me tag along for a bit. It really made my day. To all the people who ask if it's okay to go to Kind of Funny Prom or other Kind of Funny events alone, Pax showed me the answer is yes. The whole weekend was littered with conversations that started, hey, you're a best friend. Kyle also encouraged me to go to some of the community meetups in NYC, which I will seriously do after my experience this past weekend. Hell yeah. Thanks to Kyle and Matt and all the other cool people I met in Boston. And thanks to Greg and the guys for building such a great community. It was also great meeting you, Greg, at the meet and greet. No problem, Billy the door. Thank you very much, Kyle, Matt, and Billy for being part of this community, being awesome. Remember, very yes, cool. go to all sorts of events and wear your kind of funny gear. The other best friends will find you in real life. Tim. In a not creepy way. In a, well, may, I mean, it'd be I, creepy. I mean, it won't be creepy unless you want it to be. Tim. Yes. When we're doing this show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, we give the viewers a special job. That's to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. What do we screw up today? Ignacio Rojas writes in and says that there is a VOD of the PAX panel on the PAX 3 Twitch page. Thank so you very you much. Check it out there. Uh, he also says the Lickitung reference is from a Pokemon Stadium minigame where you play as Lickitung eating sushi. How did you not know this, Greg? I ain't no dork. Eat Trying the Demon says thing. Dead Cells was a big deal on PC. It sold 687,000 copies on Steam. Now, I'll tell you something right now. That is an impressive number. <laughs> I will be quiet. That is an impressive number. Good job for you guys. Capitalist Pig says, regarding the origins of Rogue, Rogue was the name of a game developed back in the early 80s. It featured ASCII art. Do you say that? I was asked. See, I don't know. Whatever. And was extremely minimalistic. It was known for a high degree of difficulty as well as permadeath. Cool. Thank you. Um, and a lot of rogue talk. <laughs> rogue one. And to my pants says for the GTA 5 info, the budget was 265 million. It made 6 billion, which is 90 million units sold. Chip. I haven't done a Superman symbol with a ballpoint in a while. I usually bring a Sharpie in here. It's not looking as good. Uh, Air Gamer says, for your information, The Bunker is a game that was released on PC, PS4, and Xbox One at the end of 2016, which was a full motion video game like Night Trap, Wing Commander 2, Phantasmagoria, etc. Okay. I've never sure. heard of that. It was an okay game in the 60 to 70% on Metacritic. Oh, okay. 
Remember when Night Trap came back out and nobody cared? Nobody gave a fuck. Damn. Lord of Pwn says Radical Heights has been in development for five months. Okay. Thank you, Lord of Pwn. Yeah. ASCII. Albrecht says it's pronounced ASCII. A S C I I. Oh, you got it. You're wrong on the question you asked during yeah, you're wrong. Was fucking lie. Look dude. at you guys. You're so fucking wow. good at this show. Uh, here's the deal. Tim and I are going to Columbia, Missouri. I can't believe it either. We're taking Pixel Brave from the community to film all this stuff for us. Mm -hmm. If you are in the Midwest, you need to be at CJ's on Broadway Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Come hang out with us. Be in a kind of funny video. Eat some goddamn good wings. Yes. Here's where I'll tell you the hosts are for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, Jared and Gary. Day after that and the day after that, Andrea and Jared. Then Friday, Greg and Tim return. Hell yeah. We talk about God of War a little bit on the Gamescast. Do that stuff and all mm -hmm. that jazz. Be good. It's be gonna fun. be a big week. It's gonna be a huge week. I don't know if Kevin will make it. How tired are you right now, Kev? He's just staring at me. That's how tired he is, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know, this has been kind of funny games daily. Each and every week to end a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, head over to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, youtube.com slash kind of funny games, or podcast services around the globe. Watch the show. Enjoy it with your loved ones, unless they don't like cursing. Uh, remember, you can go to kind of funny.com slash KFGD. Answer some questions. What? Submit them. I, it's, it's a hard switch to throw mm. going from event mode to regular mode and then right off to the events again. I guess so this has been like a whole, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, this is just like a tease. I'm not even, I can't, I, I'm not in my swing and I won't be in my swing when we come back on Friday. So you know what I mean? There. People expect it. People expect it. People expect you to swing both ways. You know what I mean? Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I don't know what I meant. <laughs>